Today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down the mini scheme that is taking over Madden 24. It is the bunch strong nasty out of the Colts offensive playbook. If you guys wanna get my entire Indianapolis offensive ebook, I'll put a link at that in the description below. It's only 10 bucks to become a Patreon member. And that's where you get access to all of my offensive and defensive ebooks. I actually just dropped a massive update to the uh, Colts playbook as well uh, to kind of break down some of the stuff that we're talking about today, but also some advanced stuff that you can do with the scheme to make it super, super effective against really any defense that you face. So starting out here, we're just going to come out in uh, cover four. We're going to go through the different coverages, how to beat it. Pretty much the meta right now is either base press dollar or a double Mabel look either at a six one or dollar. You're not getting a lot of man coverage. I will, I will show you. Uh, a really easy way to beat man coverage out of this playbook as well. But pretty much you're going to get a baseline defense for the most part this year. Audibles for this scheme. You want to have mesh flat spot. You want to have the RPO read bubble. And then in this PA bunch shot, you want to put the play dagger. Now, uh, for the most part, you're going to be coming out in gun bunch and audibling into this to save us some time. We are actually just going to be coming out in it. And I'm going to start out with, in my opinion, the best play out of this formation, uh, which is the play dagger. Now, the first setup for the play dagger is pretty simple. All we're going to do with this play is we are just going to put our slot receiver on a slot apprentice crosser, and you're going to be able to read this play from left to right. As you can see, you can throw this crosser on the sideline, and the cool part about this is for most of these setups, you're going to be running this with your bunch to the wide side of the field. This is going to provide the best spacing possible for your uh, for your plays. Another really underrated throw in this, even though it is a little bit harder throw against like a basic defense, one of the most meta blitzes in the game is this free safety zone blitz. A lot of people are actually going to like a double Mabel look out of this, and I'll show you kind of what that might look like. So let's say they're doing defense kind of looks like this. A lot of people are doing this, and so what you can do to kind of counter this is the user is going to be on the right side. If you get that, if you get that left side safety and really anything other than a hook curl, uh, you're going to be able to basically snap and instant throw this and get easy completions. So that's your first read on the play. Then you want to essentially work back to your crosser, to your drag, and to your backside in route. So they're going to have to put some zones over there and kind of help that out. If the user chooses to take the crosser, then you're going to want to check down to your tight end route. The cool part about this is it really spaces well, and you see that that tight end oftentimes is going to come over, come open right in the middle of the field. The other thing that's really underrated about this specific setup is very quick snap, uh, friendly play. You know, it's only one hot route. And then also another thing is you are blocking your running back. So you'll be able to pick up most of the blitzes in this game. And as you can see, that tight end route just kind of gets in a soft spot against a lot of zone coverages. Now, one of the other things that a lot of people like to do this year is they like to send five, especially against a formation like this, and they're gonna put a shaded down hook curl on the left side. So if they were to do adjustments like what you see on your screen, all you wanna do is you just wanna slide your line to the right, block your running back, and you can ID this corner on the left. From there, you're gonna see we're gonna be able to pick up the blitz, and then if you have time, you can easily just check down to the flat route, that the drag route is going to kind of play like a flat route on this play. So this is one of the best plays in the formation because it really does a great job of attacking both man and zone coverages. Uh, cover four, it's just basically a high low on the left side. The other thing that's really unique about this is a vert hook really doesn't play that snap throw uh, seam streak. They have to be kind of, they basically have to unbase a line to play that. Most people aren't going to want to do that this year, just the way they play defense. And so you kind of funnel them into basically this kind of base press cover four with hard flats. And then they're just going to have to choose. Are they going to guard the crosser or are they going to guard the tight end? Now, one little pro tip for throwing the crosser or being a little more effective with this is I like to wait until this is like super, super, like kind of throw it late in the play. And I really don't freeform this crosser uh, personally. I know some people do freeform it. I just find that the crosser is able to be thrown with more consistency in getting that sideline catch animation if you throw it really late in the route and you don't freeform it. And as you can see, you're able to complete it at a little bit better of a higher clip. Now, as far as man-to-man -man goes uh, with this, we'll just kind of show this out of spinner. And basically, and, and I'm also just man this guy up to the running back. But essentially, how does this how does this look, you know, if if it was if it was spinner? or if it was basically just a man-to-man -man, uh, man -man, uh, defense. So we'll show that real quick when we get some adjustments on here. And we'll actually send five. Um, and just to illustrate, obviously, you know you'd have a user in the middle of the field, but 
in general, this is kind of what the play art would look like. If it's cover zero, you always want to peek that uh, fade, but really normally against a man, you're going to be hitting this drag over the middle. And then if they use the drag, you're going to work either the crosser or the backside in route. So it doesn't really change your reads, pretty much the same reads. It just means that, you know, you're probably going to have a drag route uh, open against against that, that coverage. All right, so the next play we're going to be going over is the play mesh flat spot. And this is your right side flood. So we just flooded the, the defense to the solo wide receiver side. Now we're going to flood the bunch side with this setup. And what we're going to do is we're going to put our tight end on a tight end apprentice corner route or a hot route master corner route. We're going to streak our slot receiver. And you can feel free to snap the ball just like this. Or if you wanted extra protection, you can block your running back and drag your solo receiver. Now, again, a lot of people, uh, you know, just in terms of defense and how they're going to be able to defend you, we can kind of – there's a lot of different ways in which they're going to try to stop you with this with this offense. But in general, oftentimes this guy's going to be on a hook curl. That means this guy pretty much has to be on a middle third. This guy oftentimes is going to be blitzing. And then, you know, you're going to kind of get a lot into this coverage right here is typically what you're going to see. So this does a really good job of attacking a defense like that because – Early, your your first little uh, route that you can hit here, this tight end corner is going to do a great job of forcing them to have to double Mabel or double flat the right side of the screen. So as you see there, that's cover four. I'll actually show the free safety zone blitz, and we can even you know back this guy off. If this guy is in a cloud flat, we'll cover that in just a minute. But most of the time, he's going to be in a hard flat. There's reasons why, because if he's not in a hard flat, obviously there's a lot of underneath stuff that we can throw. But the main thing I want to show you here is even if we block the running back, we still have a lot of um, lot of stuff open here against cover three. So, of course, I forgot to set up my protection. I got screamed at. But in general, and real quick, just little, just kind of little, um, you know, tip here. If they're backing off this slot corner and they're sending this a gap blitz, all you have to do if you're blocking your running back, then I would go ahead and just slide protect to the right, and then I would ID this left side guy. I find that to be the best way to do it if you're blocking your running back because he'll pick up the slot corner. And then as you see, that's going to be open to the right. Okay. So let's say that let's now talk about cover two and then we'll kind of talk about like, as they're going to try to adjust to this play, what they're going to have to do. So if you're playing someone and they are running a cover two, I don't care if they have 30 yard clouds. This is a, this is a laser against cover two, this deep corner, you're just going to free form it up into the outside and you're just trying to clear, uh, clear space against base press dollar. It's really, really effective. We'll talk about zone drops in a minute. Uh, I will say that corner route is not as good as the, uh, as the play out of the jets, but it is, it still works kind of very similarly. Okay. So let's talk about like advanced adjustments. So one of the things they might do is in this look is they might cloud flat this defender. If they were to do that, uh, this can defend your double corner and it still allows them to send four. So let me go back to mesh flat spot. But what you'll see here is you'll see here to the right side. Yes, the tight end is going to be guarded, but we can just check down to the drag. And honestly, late in the route, the tight end is going to come open but it's kind of a, in my opinion, it's, it's a really difficult throw to be made consistently. So I like to just check down to the drag. So then if they're doing that, if you start to see like, okay, that's kind of a tendency. They're going to put this guy on the right side in a cloud flat. We have other plays we would go to that will uh, make it easy to beat that. But one of the simple things that you can do is actually, instead of putting that solo receiver on the drag, go ahead and double team the nose tackle. And then basically you're just going to take this little running back flat. You just take this little flat juke a guy and you can kind of keep the offense moving in the right direction. The two key concepts in bunch strong is definitely the left side flood, the right side flood or the solo side flood, the bunch side flood. Those are the main plays um, in the formation. So that's why we're spending a little bit more time uh, kind of breaking these down for you. But the other thing I want to show you is in the situation that you're getting a true like, and this would be the same as if you were playing 6-1. But let's say they're backing off and they're playing, you know, kind of a double flat, double Mabel coverage. This corner route to the slot receiver 
is okay at getting separation, but I would say in general, you see here that 30 yard cloud. See how it's kind of running with him. Okay. So in Braxman, when I feel like it's a little bit better, it has to be a 30 yard cloud. It can't be a 25. A lot of people like to try to use a 25 uh, just because it can help them stop other things, but they can't, they can't really do that. But the one thing I would say is, let's say you're anticipating that that might be something that they're going to do. Put your slot receiver on the corner route. Remember, we have Howard Master or Slot Apprentice on that receiver. And now the, the route combo would look like this. So it's very similar, right? But because your slot is a little bit more up on the line of scrimmage, he's going to be able to oftentimes get over the top of that deep cloud flat. Now, again, in practice mode, you do get a little bit of random bumping when you play these cover two Mabels. So kind of keep that in mind. But most of the time, most of the time, this slot receiver will be able to get over the top of it. Obviously, if he can't do it, you can always check into something else. But in general, for the most part, this uh, is one of the best ways to flood zone. He's just not clearing in practice mode. But there you see, we got it over the top. Okay. So those are kind of some of the mainstay ways in which people will try to defend you, which kind of leads us to our third play that I want to talk about today. And that is going to be, it's really dagger, but it's, it's not the same setup. So the play dagger is, and really the only reason we're calling this is for the fade on the left-hand side. So the setup is we're going to slot apprentice post our slot receiver. We're going to drag our tight end. We're going to flat our outside bunch receiver, and we're going to streak our running back. So this setup is very similar to the play Durham out of the jets bunch strong. But this really takes advantage if they're playing these cloud flats on the outside. And the, the basic idea here is this flat. You can throw this really quick. So it's kind of like a quick read. But then the other thing that you have that this is going to open up in terms of how they're going to be playing defensively is, again, kind of think through like how we're forcing them to play defense. So one of the things we're forcing is we're forcing this guy to be in a cloud flat. The other thing we're forcing is this guy to be in a hook curl. So now what does that kind of mean for the user defender? The user defender kind of has to make a choice because this guy right here, if they did back this guy up into a cloud flat, it still wouldn't stop dagger, right? But he's this guy oftentimes is going to be in a hard flat. Why would he be in a hard flat? Because of the threat of the drag from the play dagger, right? So because of that, it kind of forces this user to make a, a choice between who he's going to use her. Is he going to use her the running back or is he going to use her the slot post? Now, the pass protection for this that I like to use is to double team the defensive tackle. This will pretty much take away the threat of the A-gap and just give you some time to get the, the pass out. And as you see, it's going to be wide open to the side of the field. Now, let's say you're playing someone that's a little bit advanced and they're going to try to take that away. And the main way they're going to try to do that is through utilizing double cloud flats on the outside. And then, you know, sometimes that makes this blitz a little bit better. But in general, they're still you're still forcing the user to kind of make the same decision because let's say the user stays on the right side of the screen, then what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to hit your, your uh, tight end drag. So what you'll see here, tight end drag wide open and be able to kind of keep the ball moving. So then you might say, okay, well, let's say that, you know, maybe they guess right and they call that the perfect defense for this play, right? The perfect defense and the perfect defense would really be a cloud flat from the safety position. However, the problem with putting the safety on a cloud flat, and this is why you got to kind of understand just how these plays work well together, is what's our first read here? Well, if the safety doesn't come down in a hook curl, we're going to be able to oftentimes throw that deep fade route. And again, as you see, the running back is going to be wide open as well. So your fade, uh, your little slot, your little slot streak route is uh, oftentimes going to be wide open. You know, if they were to do a defense like this. The only way it wouldn't be is if this defender drops into a yellow zone, which then is going to give us, you know, a lot of time uh, to be able to, you know, basically play. So, again, oftentimes we're kind of anticipating that really they're going to use this guy or this guy. One of those two are going to be the, the primary user just with the way that dollar works this year. So oftentimes, as you see, you know, you can kind of throw and, and buyer is actually playing out of his mind. But if that safety is going to get outside – it's more so like if they zone drop it. If they zone drop it, he'll actually move a little quicker than he is uh, than he is in these repetitions that you're seeing right here. But let me try to let me try to kind of get you give you a glimpse of what I'm trying to say. 
Again, this is a little bit more of a game a game throw, and it's a really advanced throw. But you're always just peeking this. So you see see how he's kind of get right in that little pocket there. So oftentimes that's going to be wide open. Now again, in game it'll be a little bit it'll be open a little quicker uh, than what we're showing you in practice mode. So a lot of things they have to do to kind of stop some of these mainstay plays. I will show uh, real quick the other route that we didn't talk about yet. So let's say, you know, again, let's say they're in kind of, you know, your standard defense here. They are going to take the slot receiver across. So maybe they maybe they do a coverage like this or, you know, they can do all kinds of different things. But in general, they're going to take the slot receiver across the formation as a user defender. That is where this running back streak is going to be wide open up the seam. So what you'll see here is running back streak up the seam. Really, really nice route. Gets into a really difficult place of the field. Uh, to be able to defend. For our fourth play, we're going to be going over kind of a bomb play, a play that you can go to when you're getting a lot of baseline press type of looks. This is uh, this is really the purpose of this next play we're going to go over. The next play, is, play we're going over is wide trail. The setup for this is we're going to flat the outside bunch receiver. We're going to ghost route the running back. If you don't have running back apprentice, then what I would recommend doing is just blocking him. Or if you're worried about pressure, you can block him as well. And then we're going to drag this slot receiver. See, this is the route combo we're utilizing here. And basically, again, cover four is really hard to play against this defense. So a lot of times you're going to get a defense that looks basically like this right here, right? So because it has to kind of look like that, that's where this post route can be a bomb over the top. So what you'll see here is if we have some time in the pocket, he's going to basically kind of cross the face of the safety. And when he does, you can actually free form it up into the outside. And oftentimes you're going to be able to uh, put yourself in a really good position to, to hit that defense over the top. So we'll show this again, kind of bad pocket by me. But you see how he kind of clears. And again, you're just trying to throw it basically up and over the top of any outside quarter or outside third. So what does this play force your opponent to do? It's really, really important to kind of understand that so you understand when and why to call it. This play is really good if they don't have an inside quarter or a deep half defender. Let me explain. So if we were just playing like a base cover four, right? If we were just playing a base cover four drop, this inside quarter, especially if they have deep zone knockout, He'll oftentimes be able to get over there. He's not able to right there, but I'm telling you in game, a lot of times he will. So that's one option. But the other option, and really the main option that you're going to see, is they're going to put this guy in a deep half or this guy on the outside in a deep half. So if they do that, then it, then it kind of comes back around because they also have to really think about, again, the slot streak, which we'll go over that in just a second. But let me just kind of show the deep half here. So what you'll see, this deep half, pretty hard to, I mean, even just imagine, like, I mean, this is a wicked throw, but you're not going to be able to, I mean, I've, I've never seen that throw be made in a game, to be honest. So that's, you know, not something we can really rely on. Okay, so because of that, there's a deep half here. So what are they going to do with this guy? Well, they have really one of two choices. They can either put him in a middle third, or we can continue this hook curl type of idea. Well, the problem with the hook curl is we go back to really any of our other plays like dagger, for example. And what you'll see here is this will be a one play touchdown. You're just going to free form up and inside. And as you see, because there's no middle third defender, they can't really do that. So there's just a lot of holes uh, that are able to be exploited, especially when you utilize this play wide trail now, let's say that uh, another adjustment they could make is they could put this defender right here into a deep half, and then we can kind of get back into a defense that maybe looks something like this. Now, while this is a really good adjustment for the bomb portion of this play, it's not a good adjustment for the offense as a whole, uh, which will explain that as well. So you see here, kind of runs himself into coverage. Again, that throw is really hard to make in game, and you're probably going to get KO'd. So but what are some of our other plays that we like to go to? Well, we love to run this double corner concept. And here we'll even, you know, put this guy on a purple to try to make him play a little better. But we love to run this double corner concept to the right-hand side, right? So what we'll do here out of wide trail, which you can do it out of really anything. But basically, you could do a setup that looks like this. 
And what you'll see here is that that deep half won't defend the deep corner on the play. So it's another way for us to get a big play. Now, in general, this is one of my favorite plays, again, just as a bomb threat. But another underrated aspect of the play is it's really, really, really good against the blitz. So against the blitz here, we're just going to send four. We're, we actually kind of got our D-line glitch, but I just want to show this. So we want to think through like, okay, so what's the user responsibility? Well, if the user reads the fact that this is a, this is a, a touchdown, especially if we're able to pick up the pressure, um, this is a 100% a touchdown, then they're going to go guard it. So they're oftentimes are going to go guard that route, which is going to then leave us able to just check down to this running back ghost route right over the middle of the field. Now, the other thing that we can do off of this is, again, what are some other popular popular ways in which we might get defended uh, in this defense? Some other ways we might get defended in this defense would include things such as a backed off cloud flat on the left side, uh, and then probably this guy being in a flat with the user kind of in this little pocket here. And then, again, they're still susceptible to the bomb because of the fact that they're having to base out of certain coverages, right? So... We have a lot of different options, but in general, let's just assume that this guy is going to kind of stand here and then he's going to bail back eventually to go defend the bomb. So just to illustrate that, we'll put some zones out here that will kind of showcase what that would look like. So again, as we're talking through this here, they're going to go take the bomb play, right? But who's wide open? Again, running backs wide open on the ghost route. It's almost impossible to defend the running back ghost, the flat, the drag, and the trail route. Now, the reason it's hard to defend the drag and the trail route is because, again, this is where, again, we're always anticipating this guy going to the post because it kind of has to, right? He kind of has to. So I want to just kind of illustrate, let's say, for example, they play incredible defense on the running back. And to illustrate that, we're just actually going to use the running back here just to illustrate they play incredible defense on the running back and they just have the perfect adjustments with the quarter, Okay. So let's just say they have the perfect adjustments for kind of the main couple routes. Well, then what you're going to be able to see here is your trail route is going to be wide open right in that little pocket against that coverage as well. So this play just really does a lot for your offense because it really forces them out of the mainstay defenses that they're going to want to run to be able to defend you. Now, for the last play, we're going to still be in wide trail, but what I want to do for this last play is just kind of showcase what I would be doing if I was worried that I was playing a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, this would kind of ultimately be really my go-to play for just your basic, you know, man coverage concepts that a lot of people like to try to try to try to utilize. So for this here, uh, we are going to a couple different options you can do. Number one, you can run the short side or wide side. I do think it's good both both ways here. But the first setup is we're going to drag our slot or our slot. We're going to wheel our running back. And then you have a choice here. You can either corner route this guy on the right or you can flat him. If you have slot apprentice, I do suggest corner routing him. And the reason I like to corner route him, especially if he's not getting pressed, is because if he's not getting pressed, you can basically throw this in a way that it's going to be able to attack man coverage really, really, really well. And then the running back is also going to be able to serve as a clear out. Let's say, for example, that you know maybe they're adjusting. you know Maybe they're trying to give you a man-to-man -man look but ultimately they kind of roll into a zone look. When you run this to the wide side of the field, the wheel will pull the third, and then this can be thrown on the sideline. I threw it a little bit early there, so we'll show that one more time. And again, let me just actually audible into a, a man line cover three buzz just to kind of showcase it. So what you'll see here is that this corner route, again, if I wait on this, I'm just going to pass lead it down the outside, and as you see, it's able to get open against the outside third. Now, when you run this play to the short side, this is where I think it's really good against man coverage specifically. You'll see that this running back wheel pretty much always beats man over the top. And then it's really hard. It's just really hard to defend this play in man coverage. So let me just try to showcase it again. And hopefully we won't get shedded. But you see here, See how he kind of gets on top of the defender? Now, right here, Howley is actually just a beast, so he'll KO it. But most of the time, you're not going to be matched up, you know, one-on-one -on -one with him. And if you are, you're going to have other stuff. So this is something really important to kind of showcase as well. 
the the drag route this year is really good against man. So if you can throw this drag with consistency, this is going to just kill man coverage right out of the gate. And so how do they adjust to that, right? Well, one of the ways they have to adjust to that is this guy now has to go into a, uh, a flat right over here. So he has to go to the flat. Obviously, you see here we have a deep third zone, right? So this is kind of going back to our original discussion with the ghost route even. This is another great way. Look at that A-gap. That's crazy. If you guys didn't know, if you ever want to run the A-gap out of cover one robber, it's the same um, It's the same basic A-gap out of uh, cover, out of, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank, out of cover, uh, cover, cover two press. So anyway, here, get this man coverage situated. But basically, if you take a look at this, let's say, let's say we run this combo, right? What you'll see here is the post route will still kill the middle third. So this is where they can get really burned with the big play if they're not putting two deep halves on their field. If we go back to the discussion on dagger, dagger has also got that fade. So the press fade forces them to have to have some deep help. If they're going to play press man, they have to have uh, deep safety help. The best way to play press man is going to be cover two man, which default has a shade underneath, right? So this is where this play becomes really good. Now, against Shade Down Man, I would not put a corner route out here. He's just going to get bumped. So I would just put him on a flat. And what you'll see is by doing that, you now have a really, really easy read between your tight end, your running back, your drag, your post. Somebody's going to get open. Oftentimes, the route that is going to get open is going to be your running back. So let me explain. So you'll see here against Cover 2 Man, because they're in a shade underneath, that's crazy that I'm I'm still getting absolutely shamed by Chuck Halley. Halley's just ruining the ruining the ruining the day for me here. But anyways, let's see if we can show it again here. They have a shade underneath principle, right? So look at how the running back just toasts that coverage. It will throw this. The deep half is gonna have to kind of roll back to the post route, which is then gonna leave your running back more open over the middle. Now, let's say you wanted to work the running back a little bit more here. So, or I'm sorry, you wanted to work the post. You'll notice that when I run this to the wide side of the field, then I can throw this post on the cut and kind of throw it in that window right there. And as you can see, I mean, this just gives you a lot of options against me in coverage. Now, another way to run the same basic play, okay, is we're just going to wheel the running back. This is a potential touchdown, one play touchdown against cover two man. But essentially here, what you're going to see is the running back will pull the half on the left, the corner will pull the half on the right, as he takes forever to do so. But as you see here, running back gets over the top. So there's just so many ways to beat man. But if you ever do struggle with man coverage, really this play is all you really need uh, to be able to attack man coverage well. Another setup just for fun would be something like, again, if I'm, if I'm playing a lot of man coverage, it might be something like this. Right, we have the we have the same basic idea, but now we have a running back Texas route, which we know is really really effective this year against man coverage. Hope you enjoyed this video breakdown. If you guys want to get my entire Colts offensive ebook completely updated, get access to all of my ebooks for just ten dollars by becoming a Patreon member today. You can sign up at the link down in the description below.